Well, here we are again. Not exactly uh, audio-video this time. Rather more, um, well, I suppose you could call it vintage appliances, if you will. This old uh, Hot Point Ice Diamond fridge is probably an 80s or maybe 70s model. I'm really not sure, but it has got the faux wood effect top. And I got it for a song, really, round at one of our local uh, charity furniture stores. So, uh, and all's been very good with it. But the other day, I noticed that it uh, didn't seem too cold in there. And twiddling the thermostat to make it go colder didn't make any difference. So uh, thoughts turned to, oh God, don't tell me, new fridge time again. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, I had a bit of a brainwave, took the cover off there. Having carefully unplugged the unit first, because bear in mind it's 245 volts where I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, we do not wish to have uh, pop and corken and spitzen sparken and blow and self and across and rumen. So, pulled the terminal wires off the old thermostat, and uh, you can see there, there they are, those two pins. Gingerly short-circuited the terminal wires to see what would happen, and sure enough the compressor started to rub. So I then got the multimeter and checked across these, and given the temperature reading on the thermometer in the fridge at the time, these contacts should have been closed, allowing power to flow, but there's nothing there at all. So off to the shed, find another thermostat, and uh, install that. Now, these thermostats on older fridges, and maybe even some uh, newer ones, have a little capillary thing. You see this silver tube with the white bit of insulation. It's actually a very thin pipe, and it's filled with a gas that expands and contracts at a ridiculous rate compared to air, shall we say. So, when the fridge gets too warm inside, what happens is the gas expands, there's a tiny little bellows inside there that it inflates, this in turn closes the switch that starts the motor up for the compressor, and so the fridge begins to get cooler. When the fridge is cool enough, of course, see there it goes now, when the fridge is cool enough, the gas has contracted by them, and so of course the bellows fold back up, if you will, the contact drops out and it shuts the motor off. It's as simple as that. And all you do by turning the thermostat up and down is vary the distance the contacts inside this thing have to travel before it fires up. Simple as that. So, having found another thermostat, it was then simply a case of wiring it back in. Be very careful if you do this because, as I say, remember this is a tube. Don't do what some silly bugger did that I know, and when he couldn't work out where it all went, cut the thing to length. Yes, you heard me, cut the thing to length. Of course, what happened? That special gas escaped, and the thing was useless. <clears throat> yeah, good, isn't it? Now on this one, the computer he goes through the ducting with the wiring for the light and the thermostat itself. Then behind here, the cooler itself, and it's screwed onto there so that it picks up on the temperature inside the fridge nicely. It's uh, at the bottom end of it, so it's roughly where my hand is now. As you can hear, we're whirring away busily, getting cooler, and uh, I'd better shut the door, because I don't want to try and air-condition the whole planet, do I? So, uh, that was all there was to it. So, uh, the trouble is, though, of course, if you call somebody out, well, they're probably going to charge you, what, £30, aren't they? Or, you know, say $50 if you're in the States, and uh, that's without any part. 
and so of course it ends up being dumped. Oh dear, what a wasteful world we live in, eh? But uh, yeah, so that's dud. <laughs> Go in the Vilnius wagon, I think, or in the recycling down at the skip. Amazing what you find in that skip near um, well, where I go, because uh, you do find some tasty things down there from time to time, <laughs> which is rather nice. Now, a couple of things about the channel. Now, you know, as you can see, this is sort of a AG3304 comeback, so to speak. Uh, I don't think I can name it that again. No, it probably wouldn't want me to anyway. But uh, Vintage Sounds 14 has got most of the old videos that I made on what he calls the AG3304 Tribute Channel. The only thing is you can't comment on them because he's had to put um, comments disabled on it. Because he was getting all these comments directed at me, saying how are you and all this sort of thing. And of course they don't come through to me because it's not my channel, if you see what I mean. So, uh, yeah, that, that's that's why he's done that. But uh, I was um, quite flattered to find that. I have to say, I didn't think I was worth that much. Yeah, I know I'm not. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, so we're still tinkering about and uh, looking after various elderly uh, refugees, which would otherwise probably have ended up on the dust. I mean, that's a classic case in point. Uh, that Amstrad there, one blown capacitor on the power circuit, and uh, no sound at all. Uh, another capacitor, slightly higher voltage value this time because it sailed too close to the wind, and off she went again. Yeah, perfect. Better still with the new record player board in it, mind you. Hmm, I have to say that. And uh, with a few mods to the tape deck. Yeah. Anyway, well, let's be honest, they were cheap and cheerful. So we'll see you soon. And, uh, well, keep safe and, uh, well, bye for now.